Your job is to help people buy and sell real estate. There's always going to be closings every single day for the rest of your life, regardless of market conditions. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Ricky Caroo! He is an investor, a speaker, and soon to be remembered, in my opinion, as a legend in the industry. The cool thing about what he was doing was he was documenting everything. Like he would post his calls, his work he was putting in, the strategies, he was sharing everything. I'm gonna go out here and do my job, connect buyers and sellers. That's all I'm focused on. See, this is how I built my business faster than anyone else. Literally every single lead gen activity comes back to one thing. It's about figuring out what works for you. Every single person you call is the exact same lead. You gotta believe in you, you gotta believe in the market, you gotta believe in your abilities, your, the fact that you're there to help them, what your intentions are. I don't care if somebody lists their property with me. If you're not talking to people that might buy and sell real estate with you during that time, you're doing nothing. Why not just go ahead and have conversations with people right now? All right, what is up, Agent Power Hour squad? Get ready to blast into 2024 with a session that's gonna set the real estate world on fire. First up, let's give it up for our digital maestro, Jim Hund. This guy's AI and SEO skills are like wizardry for your listings. They're pure gold. Then we've got the unstoppable force, Kyle Powers himself. This man doesn't just play the game, he owns it. And if there's a real estate challenge, you bet Kyle's already conquered it. And of course, the strategy king, Peter Tulin, Mr. Google Business himself, is actually on vacation in the Dominican Republic, and we're all super jealous about it. So have fun, buddy. We miss you. And then me, I am in the house as well, obviously, as I'm reading this. Uh, so if you're ready to unlock the power of AI and CRM for you, well, I'm your guide to guide you through the tech maze straight to the top. So for today's main event, we've got the real estate heavyweight, Ricky Carruth. This guy is a record smashing broker, investor, and coach crushing over a hundred deals a year for eight years as a solo agent. Yep. That's Ricky. And the mastermind behind zero to diamond. That's also Ricky. So buckle up for a ride with Ricky as he shares his blueprint for success. This ain't just a talk. It's a gold mine of strategies to supercharge your 2024. So let's get this power hour rolling and welcome Ricky Carruth to the show. What's up, Ricky? How you guys doing, man? That was that was impressive. Heck yeah. it, it, that's <laughs> we that's how we hey, Impressive person deserves an impressive intro. So, oh, man. thank you guys so much. So, yeah, you, you guys just kind of let me know what direction you want me to go with this. I can go in so many different directions. Um, you know, I can cover a lot of stuff and then we can hop into some Q&A where I think a lot of the value could actually be for this group. OK, um, do I have a couple questions for you, if you don't mind. Um, I guess since we're starting 2024, uh, a lot of stuff been going on with the interest rates. It's finally dropping. Uh, and it looks like, you know, the savings of the households in America are decreased. So might be looking at some more interest rates drops. Um, how do you think that's going to affect 2024? And is there any comparisons we can draw with 2024 as like previous years? Yeah. So there, there's two things. There's the outside factor of what interest rates actually do to the world, to the economy, to, you know, whatever the case may be outside uh, factors. Okay. Then there's the inside factor, you as a real estate agent, um, and you as a real estate agent, none of this matters even for a split second, because it's out of your control. There was 4 million transactions last year. There's going to be four to 5 million this year. Um, even if it goes to 3.5 or goes to 5.5 or whatever it is, it does not matter. You can't do anything about it. There's always going to be closings every single day for the rest of your life, regardless of market conditions. Forever. When dot com crash happened, 9 11, 2008, the pandemic, all the most scariest times in our economic history, real estate closings are still happening every day by the truckloads. Go back to 2008 and look at the data, right? The scary, that was the most worrisome time ever. I mean, Lehman's brother crashed. It was like pandemonium. People were just losing net worth left and right going bankrupt. It was crazy. I went bankrupt back then, sleeping in my car, we're, uh, roofing houses, serving tables, like after I made a million dollars as a real estate agent. It was a very weird, scary time. And guess what? You go back and look at how many closings are happening in your market, and there were truckloads of closings happening, much lower than what they were, much lower than what they 
well, I mean, it was the same amount as last year. Like 2023 is the same amount of closings as 2008. And you guys are all still here. I mean, like it doesn't get any worse. And if it did get a little worse, what's it going to do? Go down to 3.5? And that was the fastest rake height in history. And you guys are still selling real estate. Like, I mean, okay, can we? So, so with that being said, can we quit worrying about as a real estate industry in terms of our success? about rates yeah we can worry about rates for our clients and kind of how to advise people and what to say and stuff but you never want to try to predict the market to your clients because that's just a losing battle you'll never get it right i mean the biggest mortgage gurus out there were saying that it was going to be around five percent by the end of last year like early last year they were saying it was going to get down to five percent by mid to last year never even got close and these guys are like genius gurus, right? And they can't even predict what rates are going to do. And it doesn't matter. Your job is to help people buy and sell real estate. It doesn't matter what rates are. Okay? So there's the outside factors, like I said. It affects people. It affects the world. It affects the economy. Blah, blah, blah. I don't care as a real estate agent. I'm going to go out here and do my job, connect buyers and sellers. That's all I'm focused on. That's all I'm worried about. Anything else is a distraction that's going to prevent me from reaching my goals and helping, helping the amount of people I got to help to hit those goals. So if it, if it doesn't apply or help me get to where I want to be in terms of the amount of people I want to help to make the amount of money I want to make, then I'm not going to think about it. It's a complete waste of time. Okay. Well, you're ruining this, Ricky, because it's always fun to look back in a year and see how we did on predictions. <laughs> it is fun, but it, 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 look, you know what's fun? It is fun because I'm the worst. I, I predict. Like, I used to not predict at all because I didn't care because I was just a real estate agent. Now that I'm a coach and a, a social media guy, I watch the market a lot more. And so I throw out these predictions because I've been doing this so long, 22 years. I went through 2008. I've seen all the ebbs and flows of a lot of different kind of markets. And to me, realizing that closings happen every day, it's a lot easier um, just from pure experience to kind of see where the market's going because the market moves in slow motion. You can't, I mean, it, it's, it, nothing happens on a dime in real estate. It's all very slow moving. Um, so I throw out a lot of predictions too. And uh, I like to, to sit, sit back and, and see what comes true that I say and what doesn't. So I'm in the same boat. So do you think 2024 is going to be better or worse than 2023? It depends on what your definition of better or worse is. I mean, you know, like what, and, and, and Mark, what it's always good are, for what, somebody, right? Listen, what, what, what we think about the future again, matters zero when it comes to our success. So do I want to talk about this? Yeah. Do I want the people that are, that are listening to know that it does not matter when it comes to your business? Yes. So, so when we talk about as real estate agents in these meetings, um, you know, it's like, I, I think a lot of agents look at this and they're kind of like, uh, yeah, as we talk about the market, they're kind of like ap applying it to their business. Like it matters whatsoever when it does not Um, but yeah, let's talk about it. Uh, 2024, like who knows there's so much uncertainty with 2024, like election year, interest rates, lawsuits, what's going to happen. There's a lot of uncertainty, let's say. I think this is one of the hardest years to predict, honestly, um, you know, ever. Um, but I believe we have historic, historic pent up demand, more pent up demand than we've ever had before. There's this thesis out there about the silver tsunami, right? Have you guys heard about that? 10,000 people are turning 65 every day and this this older generation are going to start downsizing. It's going to add a lot of inventory to the market over the next you know, three, four, five years, we're going to have so many millions of people that are, you know, 65 plus by 2030. And it's going to be this, they're calling it silver tsunami of inventory into the market. You know, I think that's real. I think there's some truth to that. I also believe that there's a lot of um, these uh, big box investors that uh, weren't around, you know, 20 years ago as well, that are happy to scoop up homes. So, do I think there's going to be a lot more transactions this year? Yeah, I do. I think, I think interest rates could be lower. Again, doesn't matter. I mean, look at last year. I mean, even when rates went from three to, you know, let's just call it seven, um, we still had four million transactions happening. <laughs> you know, I mean, so uh, better. You know, the difference in two thousand eight and now, just like looking at it, you know 
from a 30,000 foot view is prices haven't went down. You know, we got the same amount of transactions as 2008, but prices are still basically at all time highs, you know, and they're hanging in there. Um, so we'll see. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm interested. It's like watching a soap opera or something, but at the same time, we gotta, we gotta, you know, we gotta draw the line between that stuff and the success of our business. Cause it's two completely different things that honestly has nothing to do with each other. No, I like that you on brought the, up the silver tsunami too, Ricky. Um, I think that's going to be a huge play in 2024 and going forward for the next few years. Uh, as we start to see these older people needing to get assisted living and stuff like that, yep. we have an opportunity as agents to capitalize and helping them with that transition. So kind of taking an outside play on that and not just focusing on, you know, the increase in inventory that's going to yep. come to the market, but how do we as agents help that generation of clients access their equity to transition into that assisted living and then therefore giving us, you know, listings and, you, and just helping doing what you're supposed to be doing, right? What's the number one reason why people choose a real estate agent? Come on guys, somebody else jump in. Comfortability. Here. They, they, <laughs> they want to get their home bought or sold. Mm. No, you like to trust you. That's you how they pick their agent. They, oh, pick. the number one. They, they, so they did this huge poll like NAR did a long time ago. And it was not long time ago. This is a couple of years ago. And it, it it was overwhelming. This this reason was 34% versus everything else is 1% or less. Okay, like brokerage was 1% or less. Online, 1%. The number one reason was that they had a friend in the business with a great reputation. And so our job, literally our job is to make friends with people. That's your job. And anything that you're doing that doesn't, contribute to the overall goal of making as many friends with property owners in the market as humanly possible to build your business, build that brand with them, remarket to them forever, create a great first impression, let them know you, you love them, you help them, you, you know, you, you're here for them whenever they decide to do something. That's how you help the anybody. I mean, that's how you build anything. If that, if that's what you want your niche to be, which I wouldn't pick, <laughs> that wouldn't be my, uh, my, my pitch. Um, my niche is like going after like 65 and ups. <laughs> that wouldn't be like where I wanted to live in my business. But, but Hey, if that's, if that's your, if that's where you want to go. Okay. Go, go talk to all the 65 and uppers <laughs> all in your market and, you know, make friends with them. Probably easy to talk to. So. So uh, we actually mastermind on this before too, because um, of exactly what you're saying. Um, you know, what are some good ways? Cause a lot of us on here, you know, we're kind of all in the same age group and stuff. And we don't like, you know, we're big on social media and AI and tech and everything else. Um, but, you know, a lot of the people that's uh, silver um, age group isn't on there. Uh, do you have any recommendations? I know that's not like your specialty and stuff. Um, like me personally, how I've done this, I've uh, gotten in, involved with uh, groups and stuff, in my church and stuff. And yeah. they're all way older than I am. And uh, so uh, that's the only way I've really found out what a, what a other suggestions do you have if people do want to get a, li get a list them. of get a list of of all of their phone numbers and call them when i go to church i'm only going to talk to what 10 20 30 40 of them hell i can call 10 20 30 40 of them a day i basically i'm basically doing what you do at church every day so every day i've went to church you're you're, you're going to church what you accomplish there i'm doing it once a day See, this is how I built my business faster than anyone else. Literally every single lead gen activity comes back to one thing, creating a list of people to sit down and call. If you do social media, you're trying to get to a place where you have a conversation with someone. If you're doing Facebook ads, you're just building up this list of people who are going to sit down and call. Zillow leads, sit down and call a list. Open house, sit down and call the list of people that came in. It all comes back to sitting down and calling a list of people. So when I realized that, I was like, well, I don't have to do all this stuff that everybody does, you're just prolonging what's going to eventually happen anyway. You sit down and call a list of people. I'll just call a list of people right now. So literally, like, I was getting done in a week. I was calling as many people in a week as most people call all year because they're doing a bunch of marketing and they're spending a bunch of money and they're doing open houses and they're going to meeting people at church and they're doing all the stuff, which is just trickling the conversations over the year, which I compressed into just a week. So literally every week that went by, I was doing a year worth of the work. The work is how many people did you talk to that now know who you are? You talk to about real estate and now you remarket to. That's the whole game. 
And I was doing in a week what most people were doing in a year. And that's why my that's why I was building my business. That's why I outpaced every single person because I skipped all the minutia and went straight to the actual work that needs to be done right this second. So I would just get a list okay. of the people that are 65 and up, and I would call them and say, Hi, yeah, you know, I'm a Ricky, I'm a real estate agent here in the area. How you doing today? That's it. And literally, my call to action, my entire reason for calling, my entire reason for existence on that call is to know how they're doing today. <laughs> All these coaches and stuff are like, don't say, how are you doing today? That's the dumbest thing in the world. Okay. Well, like I've made millions. Here's the thing about that too. Every single strategy and script and legion activity and silver shiny penny stuff, every single one of them works. There's people making millions of dollars off every single thing. If you look at something, you say, oh, that sounds slimy or that sounds stupid or, uh, you know, that's too expensive. There's people making a million bucks a year off of that thing, whatever you're talking about. So understand everything works. You can't talk shit about nothing because it all works. It's about figuring out what works for you and then going all in on that and doing and doing what matters. Right. What is what matters? What matters is that more people get to know who you are until you're making the amount of money you want to make and you're remarketing to the entire uh, to everyone you've ever talked to in a very simple, uh, effective, scalable way. Now, do you think that um, uh, you talked a lot about uh, cold calling people and stuff? Now, do you feel like people just need the right scripts or they just most agents just need to pick up the phone and dial? Both. I mean, listen, the stages of calling is scared to call. Second stage is you made some calls. You realized you weren't going to die. Third stage is, okay, now let me hear, let me know what to say. Fifth, fourth stage is how do I say it? And fifth is how to read people on the phone. And, and the future top producers just blow through those stages where a lot of people get stuck. Some people are scared. They never made the call. They get stuck there and they just stay, they stay low producers or they, they make the calls, learn they're not going to die, but don't learn what to say. And a lot of people learn what to say, but not how to say it or how to read people on the phone. And you got to progress through that. Here's the thing, man. The leads you guys are calling cold calls are the same exact people that you're getting off Facebook and meeting in church and Zillow leads. And it's all the same people. We got to stop saying, okay, these leads are easier to call or these leads are different than these leads. No, they're not. Every single person you call is the exact same lead. You got to get that person. It, it's your perspective that's really messing you up. The, it, it, every lead is the same thing. Hi, I'm an agent. How are you doing? What can I do to help you? I have a buyer. I have a rental property over here that's a good deal. Or I have a place you can upgrade to. What is it that I can do for you today? I mean, every lead's the same. An internet lead. I saw you were looking at some properties online. What can I do to help you? What you got going on? Tell me your situation. I don't care what kind of lead it is. So if we if we can, like the people that are scared to cold call, right? But you're okay calling Zillow leads. Get a list of every property owner in your market and just pretend like they're Zillow leads. You'll crush it. Nice. Hey, uh, and then also uh, I had a question here in the chat. Um, what do you think about agents doing market update videos? Uh, do you think those are effective or they? Yeah, something I think just they're spring? really effective. Yeah, I think they're really effective. I don't think they're effective in an email. I don't think email is a video platform. When people check email, they want to get in and out. If you're if you're trying to make if you want to try to make them watch a video for a minute or two, they're never going to open up your email ever again. They're trying to get in and out. They literally open sales emails for a second, literally. Um, but for video platforms, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, etc., Awesome. Yes, do it. What it's going to come down to guys with this is charisma, enthusiasm, you know, don't sound like every other, just boring, <laughs> boring real estate agent. Do it with some pizzazz. Do it with, I mean, are you excited about this or not? You know, get excited about it. Tell people what's up. Um, be different, stand out. You know, it, it, it comes down to one thing, confidence. 
you know, people can smell lack of confidence a mile away and there's a million agents to choose from. So if you even have an inkling of, of, of that lack of confidence in you that they can see, whether you think they can see it or not, they're not going to choose you as an agent. You got to believe in you. You got to believe in the market. You got to believe in your abilities. Your the fact that you're there to help them, what your intentions are. I don't care if somebody lists their property with me. When I'm calling uh, prospects, I'm not trying to sell them anything. I'm just trying to get to know them and see if there's something I could do to help them. That's it. I'm not trying to list. I'm not trying to handle objections, get them to sign the contract. Now, uh, did you have some things you want to talk about or you want to like uh, field questions from the crowd? Yeah, dude, we can just do q and A. I I didn't. I, I'm here to help you guys. <laughs> it's been yeah. a nice little one. I, I love session, it. You know, I just kind of get on here and scream at you guys a little bit, try to shake you loose, yeah. give you guys a different love perspective. It. I don't really have anything prepared, but, um, you know, awesome. happy to just dive into anything <clears throat> with you guys, whatever I can do to bring the most value. Okay. Yeah. Let's, uh, um, if anyone has some questions, I mean, this, how often you get ask Ricky Cruz a question. So let's see what you guys got. Go ahead, Meg. So I have like my pipeline has completely dried up and yeah. I have a lot of people that were telling me we're going to wait, we're going to wait, we're going to wait. Yep. Well, it's now been however long yep. and I don't really have anything in the pipeline. What would be your advice for me to kickstart getting some prospects? Like I will now call call, but like I was trying to work my sphere but anyway mm -hmm. i'll shut up your choice <laughs> so so work your sphere that only maintains your business your sphere like are you doing anything to stay in touch with your sphere outside of making calls uh i dropped off christmas presents and like christmas gifts and Any, stuff like anything that. on a consistent basis except for one year for once a year for christmas no okay so christmas put everybody in, listen to me <laughs> put everybody in a database and start doing a weekly email on the same day of the week forever and tell them okay. your opinion and tell them your opinions on stuff. Send them the new listings, right? And they're gonna say, damn, Meg is consistent. She's dependable. She's a hard worker. She's honest. Look at the information she's given me. And she wrote this. She didn't let a company write it for her. This is real. You know what? I'm starting to kind of Meg is starting to kind of grow on me as a real estate agent. It does all the heavy lifting for you, and you can scale that doesn't matter if there's five or five million people. It still only takes you 15 minutes a week. There's no reason why you shouldn't do that on the same day of the week forever so that everybody in your database never forgets who you are, what you're about, and that you're here to help. That's number one. If you're doing that, you don't have to worry about calling your sphere. They're going to call you when they get ready to buy or sell. Now it's just a race to how many people can we get in that database, getting that email so they can continue to know who you are based on the first impression you gave them when you met them that you're going to treat them like family forever and work really hard. Right. So back to your question, though. You know, your pipeline is dried up. So so it brings me to the question, OK, what are we doing for leads? Well, there's two things you said. The people are saying that we're going to wait, we're going to wait, we're going to wait. You know what that you know what they're telling you? We're not going to do anything ever. See, they tell us what we want to hear to get us off the phone. OK, so so Meg, let me ask you, when they said they wanted to wait, give me an example of one of them and tell me how long they asked to wait. So I will agree with the one couple were totally like blowing me off. The yep. other one is a probate. So waiting for the family estate to settle. Okay. The other one is an older couple that want to downsize, but not sure if they're ready yet. So okay. I think, yeah. So all the, listen, all those are a nothing sandwich. Okay. A nothing, a nothing burger. You, you like if you're working with four active like possible like deals buyers or sellers four that's point zero that's point eight deals on average statistically so when you got four possible buyers or sellers you're working on nothing and if you're not waking up every day like what like doing everything you can do to build your pipeline up to 10 to 15 because if you got 10 to 15 guess what you're gonna close one deal a week that's just math that's just simple math that has happened over and over and over and over again. If you're working with 10 to 15 active buyers and sellers that might buy or sell a property with you in the next six months, you're going to close one a week. So if you're at three or four, you ain't nowhere. You're nothing. You're not doing anything. Now, so there's that. 
Now let's move on to lead gen. What are you doing to get leads? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> could be working harder on that. Okay. Uh, so, 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 so what do you do all day? Let me ask you this. What do you do all day? Uh, well, I switch in between a couple jobs, so. <laughs> okay. I have a couple so you're doing part time. Part. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well then there, that, that's a, that's a viable excuse. Like you're not doing this full time. You're working other jobs to keep income coming and everything. However, the problem is, is do you have times throughout the week that you've dedicated a hundred percent to real estate? Yes. And sometimes I don't, it's totally my own fault for okay. consistency. I okay. Understand. So, so this is what you have to do. Okay. When part-time agents come to me and new agents, stuff like that, you have to have these time blocks throughout the week. Like I'm going to do two hours here and one hour there and three hours there, whatever. And they have to be in stone because if you're not dedicating any time to your business, you're not going to have a business. So you've got to get dedicated on what time blocks you're actually going to dedicate to your business. And that has to be in stone. No excuses. You're dedicated to that. Otherwise, you're not going to be in business. Okay. So then we get past that part. Like I'm just, I'm just chopping down trees with you. Just like, okay, we're done with that part. Now, now on to what we do during that time. If you're not talking to people that might buy and sell real estate with you during that time, you're doing nothing. Nothing. You're just, you're just, you know, you're just, I, I don't know what you call it. You're floating in the wind. You're just like, you're here, but you're not present. You're, um, I don't have a word for it, but you're not doing anything. Because everything you do, let's just say whatever it is that you do, you're only doing it to try to get to a conversation with someone, right? That might buy or sell. Yes. Why not just go ahead and have conversations with people right now? <laughs> There's millions. What market are you in? Uh, I'm in London, Ontario, Canada. Is there Are there a million people there? Almost. Okay. There's a million people there. Okay. There's a million people. There's a hundred thousand. There's like, could you even talk to like 5,000 people? There's a million people there. Could you talk to 0.5% of them? 5,000? I could. Yes. You could. <laughs> then why aren't you? It will. <laughs> I got to work on my self-esteem. <laughs> the number one, the number one factor for like success in the business is confidence. You got to walk in like you own the place. You got to walk in when people are just like, wow, this person knows what they're doing. Even if you don't know what you're doing, you have to exude that. And it doesn't come from not knowing what you're doing. Your confidence, Meg, needs to come from the fact that you're there with the right intentions to help them, regardless if you make money or not. If you walk in not caring if you get the listing, you just want to hear them out of what they're trying to do and see if you can figure out how to help them do it, then you're going to win. Now we have to scale that and do that back to back to back to back across as many people as possible. Thank you. I appreciate the uh, advice. I really do. You're I, welcome. Well, definitely put into action more. Thank you. Just do, just do, 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 you know, don't listen to anybody don't care what anybody thinks just do stuff evan what's up ricky how you doing good how you doing guys doing good. really good man doing good. really good just a couple canadians here buddy quick question um i know you guys have red x in the states are you aware of any programs in canada that you can use for for get getting phone numbers or no my guys up there use telelisting telelisting, telelisting. i think i think you actually get it for free with exp if i'm not wrong Oh really? I th I'm pretty sure. I'll have to check into that. I'm pretty. Nice. I'm pretty sure you do up there. I'm. I'm pretty. Yeah. Sure. Oh yeah, I got a question too. I got a question for you, Ricky. Um, you talk about cold calling a lot. I know. I know that's that's a lot of uh, kind of like how you how you built your. click on their profile and see, oh, 
they work at wherever, or they own this business, or they're uh, whatever, right? And you immediately uh, uh, message them and say, hey, thanks for the follow. I see you work at wherever, you know, tell me about that. Or like if they're an insurance uh, agent, if they're an insurance agent, say, hey, I see you're an insurance agent. Do you do life insurance or homeowner's insurance? You know, I'm a real estate agent. Um, you know, and see if you can collab with them. If they're in some kind of business, see if you can collab with them on some kind of business thing where you guys can kind of go, you know, send leads back and forth, right? Referral type stuff. Um, you know, if they're not like you just figure out, find out something in their profile that you can connect with them on DM, you know, even if they're just like a random just person. And if you, if you see in there that they do live in your area and it's a real person, not like a, a bot or something and message them and get into a back and forth with them about them. Right. And at the end of the day, the goal is, is to get their data because here's the thing with social media guys, there's a 5% organic reach on social media and there's a 90% organic reach on email. You got to get them from social to the email. When it goes out every week on the same day of the week, 90% of those people see it in their inbox. So now you own that database. On social media, you can't be guaranteed that when you put out a piece of content, your database is going to see that piece of content. Only 5% of your followers will see it. But with now with the TikTokification, where Reels has the whatever it's called, the For You page and all that, you've got a lot of people that aren't following you that actually see your reels now than used to before that even came into play. So it opens up a lot more organic stuff, especially for non-followers. And so it gives you a, um, a really awesome platform for free to build audience in your market when you're, when you're creating content about your market. Okay, but the problem is, is when people do follow you, they're only going to see your content for a couple of weeks and then you're basically going to disappear to them. Why? Because if they're not engaging with your stuff a lot, then Instagram or Facebook is going to quit showing you. They're showing them your stuff, and then they'll show other stuff to them. And so you you know because you'll see somebody's content, and it'll be somebody you've been following for years, and you'll see their content out of the blue. You know, like, oh, I forgot about that person, right? It's because Instagram quit showing you their content for a long time because you quit engaging with it. So you have this group of, think about it like this. There's a cycle of people that come into your social media ecosystem every couple weeks, okay? And they're only there for like a week or so. You got to get their contact information now. As soon as they follow you, you got to get that data because they're going to be gone. Even though they're following you, they're not going to see your stuff. So you got to get the data, connect with them immediately, and then like whatever, whatever on social media. But after a couple of weeks when they're not seeing your stuff anymore because of the algorithm, there's going to be a new cycle, a new, a new group of people that come into your ecosystem, right? And so it's just this constant new group of people. There's, there's, the, there's the core followers that engage with everything you put out that see every single piece of content, yes. But then there's this other group that kind of gets rotated where it's a new group every so all, every every couple of days or every couple of weeks, it's like a new group of people. You've got to be active on there, DMing the new followers and connecting with them and getting their data, putting them in your database. Right. And, and that, and there's a lot of work that goes into that. You got to put out content, you got to DM people, you got to, da, 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 you know, and all that it's, it's a lot, but Hey, you know, <laughs> anything you want to do is going to be a lot of work, but that's, that's how you capitalize on it. That's what I do. Ricky, thank you, man. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point. That's the one thing I think that I'm currently missing with doing it the way I do is I'm not grabbing their data right away. And like you said, you end up losing them. You end up, and then you don't see their stuff anymore. And it just becomes somebody that comes up later exactly. on. So grabbing their data, grabbing their data is the big point and the big takeaway there, man. Thank you very much. No, my pleasure, man. Good to see you, babe. Is it Hi, Anastasia? Yes. Yeah. Hello. Um, I have a question. Hi. First of all, thank you for, you know, uh, coming on the call. We appreciate it. And secondly, you've mentioned a newsletter a couple of times. Um, and apart from cold calling, when you meet people in daily life, like you become friends, so you have acquaintances, how do you get their emails? How do you ask for that? Because I feel sometimes people might, I don't know, feel weird about it. You just met them and you're asking them for their well, you email. You don't ask them when you just meet them. You don't ask them when it's a weird moment, right? You connect with them. You know, like you don't just meet somebody and say, hey, you know, I'm Anastasia, you know, how you doing? What's your email address? <laughs> That's not how you do it, right? You talk about stuff. You connect with them. You make friends with them. And then after, if you can get them talking about them, then you've, you've really kind of got them. They're, they're start, when, they start talk, when they talk, they're starting to feel comfortable. And so now you've got something and now you talk to them about non-real estate uh, related stuff. 
And then it's going to come back to what do you do? Well, I, you know, okay, cool. And, you know, you connect with them there. You may go deep on a conversation there. And then it's going to come back to you. You know, I'm in real estate. You know, you guys looking to buy or sell anything? No, cool. Uh, you know, it, like not right now. Great. Well, listen, I'd love to stay in touch with you. Is it okay if I just stay in touch with you? Yeah, great. What's a good email for you? So it's it's building the 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 rapport with them, getting into a great conversation. And then the way you ask for it is kind of asking if they're looking to buy or sell anything. And if not, you're like, awesome. I'd love to stay in touch with you for when you might. Is that okay? You get them to verbally say, yeah, it's okay if you stay in touch to stay in touch with me. Then you say, great, what's a good email? Right. So after they verbally said, Yeah, you can stay in touch, then it's you know, they're pretty much giving you permission to ask for whatever kind of contact information you want at that point, right? Uh-huh. Right. Got it. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, Luca. What's up, Ricky? What up, dude? Nothing much, man. Listen, I'm curious for people who already have uh, the email list, the weekly email going out, that's set, you know, the system is in place. What would you recommend for like next level of the of the mass engagement for your database? Um, I never really did much more. I did uh, in the email, I did like giveaways. I would do like a. Uh restaurant reviews and like reply back for a chance to win a hundred dollar gift card. I would have hundreds of people hit me back, just reply back hundreds of people hit me back. And then I would respond to all of them, get into email back and forth, pick a winner and then tell everybody else, like yeah, you didn't win, but I'll take you to lunch and nobody ever takes you up on it, but you get into these back and forth with how you're doings and what are you looking to do's and stuff like that. Um, listen, dude, like, you know, with all the stuff now where you can do mass texting and all this stuff you can do nowadays, the, 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 the slide broadcast voicemail drops, um, all that, there's a lot of different things you can do to, you know, to throw more stuff at your, at your database these days. Um, you know, but yeah, I mean, like the biggest thing is that they can tell that you spent time on the email when you're giving your opinions on things. Like um, I have a four week template system and it's week one is stats of the month. Week two is restaurant of the month. Week three is deal of the month. Week four is news of the month. And so you just rotate that every month, keep it real short and sweet, whatever the subject is. And then give your, you know, like well, one or two sentences about what you think they can tell that you wrote it. And like two, like agents, you know, like, I don't know what to say. And I'm like, okay, well, did you show property in the last week? They're like, yeah. I'm like, how many buyers are like two. I was like, you may write an offer. Yeah. One of them made an offer. I'm like, cool. I was like, your email this week could be like, hey, the market's doing great. I showed property to two buyers in the last week, and one actually made an offer on something. Dude, your clients now think that you're giving them this inside information about the market that they cannot get on Zillow or anywhere else. This is from you. And they they just appreciate that so much. It makes you stand out when you don't have a generic company writing generic bullshit emails uh, to your clients. If you do that, then they're, you're gonna, you're, you're, your brand gets diminished so fast when you do that instead of just spending a little time that your clients are going to appreciate. And so when I did it like that, you don't, there wasn't much else I had to do. They appreciated it so much after the great first impression where I didn't try to force them into a sale like every other agent that they called me when they were ready to buy or sell. Awesome. So I guess just dive deeper into the email. And yeah, and I just put a link it. right there. Um, like you can see like a year worth of my emails that I sent out to my clients right there. All right. You can just look at all of them and just kind of get a, a feel for what I do and just copy it. Copy the, copy the structure, the format. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, man. It's, I always come out when Ricky's speaking. Mm, good to see you, my yeah, guy. Kyle, what you got? Hey, Ricky, how are you up here in Canada as well on the West Coast in Vancouver? Um, mm -hmm. I'm big time into AI, chat GPT, things of that nature. So I'm really good at being consistent with blogs. I do two email uh, mailers per week. But what I've noticed you were kept saying is having your own opinion. I have my chat GPT. I have like 19 pages of PDFs with my transcript, how I speak. But then, you know, if I take a market report, I'll just take that PDF, upload it. I have my structure for my um, newsletter. Mm. From what you're saying, that's probably not the best way to go about it then. I that would. Too generic, you think? You wouldn't do that? I wouldn't do it at all. Okay. 
literally Wednesday is the day that my email goes out. You guys can see my emails there. When I when I I literally sit down and like I don't even know what I'm gonna do. Uh, like Wednesday when I wake up, I don't know what that email is gonna be. And then like I start when I sit down, I sit down and go through my process of thinking about what I'm gonna say, what it's gonna be about, all that stuff. And uh, it's literally like one or two sentences that's out of my mind, like spur of the moment, like raw. You know what I mean? Like, and people see that and they're like, they can tell. Right. Um, yeah. So with like, what, okay. With, so are you with any of your content that you're putting out or resources that you're putting out? How much do you use chat GPT in your zero. business? Zero. 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 Interesting. Yes. Okay. I mean, I, chat GPT is good. I think to, um, to kind of get you started in the right direction. If that, if you need a direction, um, for me, I think people like authenticity and I think any alternation of what's authentic about you is going to water down who you are. I'm not trying to like, I'm not trying to make people think that I'm smarter than I am or use bigger words or, you know, have correct punctuation. I don't, I don't, I'm not trying to do that. Um, I want people to know who I am because like when, when you, when you meet me in person, I'm the same person on the zoom as I am on Instagram, as I am on stage, as I am with my mom, was it like, I'm the exact same person everywhere I go. When you read my email, you can feel the energy. It's the exact same everywhere. So you you have this brand, you know, and if you're somebody different on social, then you are in person, then you are in an email, then you are, you know, on, you know, something else. People are kind of like, what the hell? Who the hell is this guy? I don't, I thought I knew him, but I really don't. Right. And so now your brand is kind of confusing people. Gotcha. That's why I think it's so important that if you are going to utilize platforms like Chat GPT, the first step that you have to take when you do that is you need to program your personality into the bot. 99 out of 100 agents that are using Chat GPT are using it wrong mm -hmm. because they think that you can just take an out the box robot throw in some uh, some content ideas or have it generate your content ideas and then wham, bam, you've got it. This is why it's so important to spend so much time. If you're going to use AI, um, use it, right? I, I personally believe that those of us that don't use AI going forward, especially in 2024, you're going to get left behind. So learning how to program yourself into the robot, which is much more and deeper than just speech patterns. It's personality, it's hobbies, it's where you come from, where you wanna go, what's your business like. Feeding that information into chat GPT can still keep and maintain your authenticity while saving you the time and creative energy it takes to generate all of this content, right? So like Kyle, for your situation where you're doing market updates and stuff like that, Maybe feed chat GPT a little bit more about you, your personal hobbies, where you come from, where you want to go, what drives you. So you can kind of get that personality injected into that robot. And then it can go back to its original purpose, which is saving us time, saving us energy, right? Like for me, I'm, I'm Mr. Music. Like that's where all my creative energy goes. So the last thing that I want to do is, you know, no, and, and not to say that Ricky's wrong at all. Like Ricky, you got your methods right on, but I don't want to wake up in the morning and try to pound out, you know, emails to, to my different clients and stuff like that. When I basically cloned my personality into my bot and I can just say, Hey, what's up for the week? Boom. It spits it out. You make your minor changes and then boom, you're ready to rock. Yeah. And I'm all about simplicity as well and scalability, right? So I don't have emails that goes out to different clients. I got one email that goes to my entire database. So it makes it really easy, simple, scalable. I don't have to think about a whole lot. I just have to think, okay, how can I bring them the most value today? Right? Good stuff. Yeah, that's no, getting... I totally agree with that too, man. Absolutely. Yeah, that's all right. Let's let's go on. This is because yeah, I mean, I I actually uh, wrote a couple uh, newsletters um, in this time um, while you guys are chatting about that. Um, because I already have a pre-programmed bot. Uh, so I was just taking Ricky's newsletters, threw it in there. Like, all right, change a few things, tweak it. So make sure you read stuff first. Make sure it's getting your personality, constantly be tweaking it. Jenny, what's up? Hi, uh, I'm Jenny from Toronto here. I just had a question for Adam. And first of all, thank you all for doing this for us. Um, Adam, you mentioned in your videos that 
there are a video that shows you step by step how to well program chat GPT or how to use it properly. Um, I've searched and I can't find them. I'm a little, well, I'm actually very new with EXP and this is where I want to be. I love writing, um, I love informing people and I just want to launch this platform in the right way. So where can I go to learn this from like zero? Um, so right now I am working on a course. It's not out yet. Uh, it will be chat G, uh, chat GPT, uh, centric. So it will teach you roughly how to program your personality in there. But realistically, what you need to do is you just need to jump into chat GPT. I would start a verbal conversation with it. So you need to download the app on your phone and then you're going to see a little set of headphones to the right side of where we prompt it. Start that verbal conversation and just tell ChatGPT that the whole goal of this conversation is going to be to duplicate your personality and speech patterns and program yourself into, uh, you know, into this, uh, into ChatGPT. And then ask it to ask you 20 or 50 or 100, however deep you want to go into it, the deeper, the better. But ask it to ask you questions that it would need to know the answers to, to better be able to duplicate this process. And then go through that. And then at the end, you can basically summarize that and put that into your own GPT and then start you know, building and updating that as it goes. But like, like I was saying earlier, the biggest key is just getting letting chat GPT get to know you. Right. Most of us just think, OK, I can use it to write listing descriptions or I can do this with it, uh, create my marketing and ad copy. But if you want the bot to talk like you, there, it goes deeper than just speech patterns. It goes into your personality. It goes into your past. You know, like what you do before real estate? What drives you to wake up and do real estate every morning? When you have this conversation with that robot, then it'll better be able to determine your personality type. And then when you create with ChatGPT, it'll be literally indistinguishable between uh, indistinguishable between you know whether you're creating it or ChatGPT is. Um, one of the things that Ricky said, ah. which I think is very key when agents are misusing chat GPT and AI is that you do, you can fuck with your brand a little bit, right? Like you can come across as this different person in one side. And then when they meet you in person, it's completely different. And then that just shows that inauthenticity and really hurts your brand. So focusing yep. on getting yourself into that bot and, 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 and duplicating that personality, that drive that, that is you, uh, is going to be key in just making sure that, you know, the content it, that you generate with chat GPT is going to be authentic to you. And you can awesome. always edit yeah, it before it goes out anyways. I'm sorry. A hundred percent. Yeah. Got it. Hey, hey, uh, hey I'm going to put a pin hey. in that one. Um, uh, because you know, we, we're going to have, uh, uh, after Ricky, we're going to have a lot of discussions on Fridays at this time, same link, same call. Um, and we'll dive more into that and deeper. Um, and uh, so also a uh, good plug there on Adam. Um, I'm also releasing a uh, website and a course here soon. Uh, so on a, AI, but uh, Ricky, uh, since we're on a subject of AI and everything else, how do you feel that's going to affect? Uh, I know don't like doing predictions, um, but this is what's fun. How do you feel it's going to affect real estate agents with AI? Help them sell more properties in less time. Sell more real estate. Just it's easier just, to scale. Uh, you, know what's, you know what it's going to do? It's going to do the same thing that Zillow did, MLS did, <laughs> um, you know, electronic signatures did, um, you know, social media did, um, it'll do the same thing. All these other things did right. When Zillow came out, what did it do? It helped me sell more property in less time. Cause now I don't have to search for properties for my buyers. They just told me what they wanted to see. It cut out hours and hours and hours of my life. I literally sold more property in less time. When MLS came out, literally post something on MLS, sell it, sitting on the couch, doing something other than trying to sell it. It sold, um, you know, electronic signatures. I didn't have to fax stuff anymore. Boom, 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 right? Same thing with uh, AI. It's just going to give us tools that we can use to uh, be more efficient and sell more property in less time. Now, do you think that with having the efficiency and stuff, um, you know, even though we're going to become more efficient and stuff with that, do you feel that uh, if you're not using it, then your uh, well, sales are going to go down you'll because have to, you'll have you, you'll have to use it like you have to use MLS. You basically have to use electronic signatures like it'll just be part of our tools that we have. Like it's it's not like you have a choice, like it's going to be something that you use. You know, it's going to be like something that every single agent uses in their everyday business. 
you know, in one form or another, depending on what those tools end up being or whatever. It's not, you're not going to have a choice. You're not going to be like left behind if you don't use it. It's, you're going to use it. What's your most controversial viewpoint um, that you see a lot of these gurus and everything else out there um, about real estate market and Depends realtors? What gurus you're talking about. I mean, there's a lot of clowns, um, you know, and honestly, nobody's right or wrong, um, you know, but I mean, since the pandemic, I've called the market as far as home prices go every single year. And, you know, every year, the there's a lot of guys who said it's going to crash worse than 2008 every year. And I put out content. It's all there documented saying, like last year, like in 2022, I said at the end of 2022, I said, not only are we going to hit uh, positive on the year in 2023, but we're going to go to all time highs. And everybody called me nuts. Even the people who were positive on the market said I was crazy for that one. Well, that's what happened. It was easy for me to see because of the supply and demand situation. When you go back to the pandemic, I said in the 30, 45 day shutdown, I said, we're going to see this massive surge we've never seen before because I knew that that was going to happen due to the pent up demand and stimulus that happened. Easy to see like this stuff's right. This stuff was writing on the wall. The real estate move, market moves really slow. Um, so I don't know, man. I think at this point, like I've been, I've only been like trying to predict the market since the pandemic. Um, and uh, I don't know. Um, it depends on who you talk to. Right. But this year, I feel like we're going to have pretty strong transactions. I'm pretty in line with all the other uh, predictions, like the four and a half range, four and a half mil. And I think prices are going to be up a little bit, you know, three, four, five percent, you know, overall. I think some markets are going to see like double digits. See, when you when you say three to five percent, that's national averages. What does that mean? That means some markets were like 10 plus and some markets are negative. It's an average, right? So and everything in between. And that's that's another thing that a lot of people get mixed up on is they're like, I'm like, oh, it's going to go up three, five, uh, three to five percent. Or like this year, I'm like, oh, you know, it's up like three percent, four percent, whatever. And like, well, my, well, well, you don't know what you're talking about. The market's up like 10 percent here, like in their market locally or there another guy's in a local market where it's down, you know, and I'm like, dude. I'm talking about national averages, bro. Um, I don't know. The more, the more, the longer you're online, the more haters you got. And it, 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 in the beginning, when you get the haters, it kind of hurts your feelings a little bit. And then it gets to where it's just hilarious. Every single, every single comment. If you don't have haters, you're not trying hard enough. <laughs> Jeremy Kane. That's what they say. That's what they say. Yeah. But until you hit about a hundred thousand on YouTube, you don't really know what they're talking about. Yeah. Thanks, Jim. What's up, Ricky? Um, <clears throat> thanks so much for your coverage of the commission lawsuits, kind of stuff like that. Uh, you talked a little bit about that on one of another call I was on. Where do you see those going? What do you what do you see as far as a resolution at some point? Um, I know I kind of what you're going to say if you I say as far as Supreme. I think it'll go to Supreme Court and get settled out. I think uh, everything will get bunched into the same. Once that happens, we'll know what the like consensus is and i think all these copycat lawsuits will kind of just disappear and get kind of settled out and uh, i think at the end of the day it'll be a settle out and new rules where buyer agent commission doesn't get offered uh on the on, from the listing side uh, buyers pay their own commission um sellers can do so if they choose if they you know want to if they want to contribute towards that but not very many of them are going to and they're not going to have to a lot of agents say well they're not they're pro if they don't offer buyer agent commission the property is not going to sell the buyer doesn't care if a buyer agent commission is, is is offered or not they're going to buy the property even if they have to go directly to the listing agent it's not going to slow down the market or anything so what's going to happen is the market's going to adjust we're going to go to like a one to three percent i think there's going to be people that take listings for one percent i think we're going to go to a one to three percent listing side um i think initially the shock of it buyers are not going to pay the buyer agent commission you know we're going to have maybe 20 percent that do 80 percent that don't because they're used to the way it is now so they're going to go directly to listing agent and figure out what kind of a shit show that is they're going to come back and over a couple years we're going to have 80 percent of buyers paying for representation instead of 20 and um and what does that look like probably a flat fee i think buyer agent c is probably going to go to more of a flat fee and on the listing side, it'll stay a percentage, whatever it ends up being, one, two, three percent. What are you doing right now to prepare for that? And Absolutely and nothing. First waiting. I could, care nothing. Less. Okay. I could care less. My job is to create relationships in the market and build my brand and help people buy and sell real estate. That is it. 
whatever the new rules are, show them to me and let me show you how I can crush it. I don't care Love what it. the new rules end up being. If it is now I'm the listing agent and buyers come directly to me, line them up. If, um, you know, now I don't work with buyers who don't sign a contract to pay me, I, I'm going to walk away with a smile on my face. If a bunch of agents leave the business and leave a lot more market share for me, wonderful. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm just, I'm ready. I mean, I, you mm -hmm. listen, you've always got to be ready for anything. I mean, it's just like the transaction, like things turn on a dime in the deals. You got to be ready to like be agile and move around just during just one little transaction. You got to be ready to, to be on your toes and move around. Same thing with this. Like you got to be ready at all times to be able to pivot and, and make adjustments on anything. So this is no different. This is, you know, I think, I think the commission pool is going to shrink dramatically 20, 30% or so. Um, I think all of our incomes are going to take a hit because now we're not getting that automatic buyer commission. Um, but we'll find out what that new floor is and then we'll build up from there. You know, I think it's exciting. I hate it for the agents that can't adapt and have to get out of the business, but you know, that's life, right? Circle of life. So, um, you know, embrace it because I believe it's all but guaranteed. Awesome. Thanks, awesome. Love that. <clears throat> Now, I uh, want to be respectful of your time. Uh, I did ask for six minutes, and I really greatly appreciate being here. Uh, two questions. Uh, one, uh, how can people follow you? I know you dropped some links. Uh, sign up for his newsletter. Uh, and two, uh, what do you want to leave here in part upon us? Guys, final go words. To, guys, go to zero to diamond.com and join our platform there for free. You can DM me there. That's a good place to connect with me. We've got over 6,000 agents. We just started that five weeks ago. We already got 6,000 agents there. Uh, that's incredible. A lot of stuff there. Free scripts, business planning, uh, the email templates, all that stuff is there. Um, so go to zero to diamond.com for that. And as far as just parting words, hey, listen, <laughs> I hope I said something that that struck a nerve or like got you, gave you a different perspective on the business. I think you should be more focused on building your career than building your 2024 business. 2024 needs to be kind of like a foundational year of say 2026. Whatever you make this year is basically just servicing the seeds you planted last year and the year before. It's already kind of set. Um, you know, work hard. Like have, you know, have intentions with everything you do. And uh, speak with urgency when you talk to your prospects. You know, have buyers, you know, to, you know, y'all have buyers. Call people that have properties that your buyers want. Um, you know, don't do the, I have a buyer thing when you don't call with real buyers, um, have, you know, rental opportunities, investment opportunities. You know, if there's a big house over here, that's newer and bigger than all these houses over here, call all these houses and say, Hey, you want to upgrade? I got this bigger, newer one over here. Um, you know, call with urgency and intentions behind what you're doing. Um, and have fun, treat everybody like family. Don't care if you get the deal and enjoy the process. It's not, Getting to a million bucks a year is not luck. It's not luck. It's just a lot of hard work and a lot of time. And every single person can do it. So I believe in you guys. All right? Go crush it. Awesome. Adam. Awesome, guys. Close out. Hell yeah. I'll, I'll send you guys on out. Um, so that's a wrap up for us, folks. Huge thanks to you, Ricky, for joining us on Agent Power Hour, man, and sharing all your mind-blowing insights. I think we're not just walking away with strategies, but we are leaving here with a new playbook. So um, thank you very much for that, man. And shout out to the amazing crew, Jim, Kyle, and Peter. You guys are always bringing your A game. Um, these guys are the unsung heroes behind our real estate victory. So make sure you give them your thanks. And of course, a huge thanks to all of you guys tuning in. You are the reason that we do this. So remember, it's not just about closing deals. It's about crushing goals and building legacies. So keep the fire burning, keep pushing limits, and let's make 2024 our most epic year yet. Stay tuned, guys, for more Agent Power Hour madness and keep smashing those records. Hell yeah. Go forth and crush it. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Ricky. Really Thank appreciate you, Ricky. It. Thank you very much, man. So appreciated. Thank yeah, you, man, Ricky. Thank you, Thanks, brother. Guys, all the best. Thank, Thank you, guys. You, Good to see you. We'll see you soon.